Hello everyone, and welcome back to the next adventure of Star Trek Adventures Nighthawk, where the crew of um, intrepid intelligence officers are attempting to track down a potential mole within Starfleet Intelligence. They believe they have a culprit, but I believe that Captain Singral has more on what's going on through his log. That I do. Captain's log, started 83429.6. Well, my suspicions have been confirmed. The Zenkethi knew we were coming. I suppose they'll attempt to spin it as a false flag attack, but I anticipate the diplomats will force the presence of both vessels at the Badlands to become a neutral standstill. A little bit of give and take, as it were. In any case, another related news. It appears that the silent vigil has been compromised. I have ordered a full comms blackout, including all SI assets, for the crew's safety. We are currently en route to a listening place on Nimbus 3 to ascertain the operating zone of the Silent Vigil. End log. All right. Uh, so, because you guys are literally traveling all across Federation space, uh, you have had some time to catch up on some personal affairs. The first being Captain Singral, who has ordered a brief detour to pick up a shuttle. And its contents are now sitting in the brig. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sitting in one of the, ah, sitting in one of the brig cells is the Orion Syndicate lieutenant known as Isabir, stalking outside the cell, licking its, licking his lips, and salivating ever so slightly is the Akashi prisoner, mercenary work for hire, thing, uh, known as Threshar. Captain Singral is, and Mr. Liam Helsing have. Some interesting questions, I'm sure. Yeah, sad thing is, Cap, I can't see Isabir. One of the promises we made when we left is that I promised you'd never see my face again. <laughs> well, I mean, I think specific circumstances would say it otherwise. You don't have any questions for her? Oh, I got plenty of questions. She just can't see my face. All right, well, if you'd like to do the silent, if you'd like to have the... Uh, Silent, on in, not in person treatment. Well, silence the wrong word. If you want to talk to her over comms, you're free to do so. If you, if that will fulfill the circumstances of your arrangement. Well, one of the things back I, when I was at the academy, I read um, in the late 1900s, they used something a paper bag they put over the head with little holes cut out for the eyes. Is that an earth thing? It, it's, it's an earth thing. And they had a, a very famous comedian that was called the unknown comic. He was unknown because they didn't know who he was because of the paper bag. God, we're old. Uh -huh. Well, I don't remember that in my Federation cultural studies class. And I don't think right now is the time for a vaudeville routine. So, Mr. Helsing, if you are here to participate, by all means. And if not, then I encourage you to find your work around quickly. I'll come up with some, sir. Would it by chance be the Starfleet Intelligent Issue uh, Balaclava? I'm thinking it would be. The one that totally covers the entire face and you can see out, but no one can see in. Uh, I'm sure something like that exists. Or the or, accidental Breen helmet laying around. <laughs> or we could do like a hologram that would make it look like my head's been cut off. <laughs> I'll come up with some, sir. So, uh, <laughs> Threshar stalks up to the console, looking like he's about to take a bite out of, out of something if it gets too close to him. But pulls back and his uh, elongated mouth warps into a bit of a sick, twisted smile. Threshar's lived up to his uh, to the agreement of the hunt. What now? Now you wait for further instructions. Mm. If I have need of you, I'll let you know. Very well. Don't worry. This, uh, this, this action won't go unnoticed. But again, you're on thin ice. I hope it is whatever this thin ice I'm on will 
not break. Warm, we are warm-blooded creatures. We do not like cold water. Well, I'll be sure to address the environmental controls back in your, back in your room to be more aliable to your conditions. Good. Thank you, Captain Sengral. And with that, he will stalk by, head out the uh, brig door, where he is met by, uh, let's say, uh, Zale, who will take him to his quarters. All right, that well, I'd like to approach uh, Yuzibir, then. She is a little worse for wear. Uh, she did not come quietly. And as you can tell from various... Uh, slash marks along her arms, legs, side, torn clothing. Eh, she has not, you know, she put up a fight, but Thrasher did his job. And she, she looks up. Hmm. Ah, you must be Captain Sengral. Forgive me if I don't stand. I seem to have twisted one of my legs in coming here at this point in time i'd like to tap my com badge and i'd like to indicate for uh nurse joy to be on standby in the brig in case it's necessary she is a memory specialist and right. hopefully what i have doesn't come comes down to that all right <laughs> But in any case, you're already familiar with me. And it seems like you were familiar with a great deal about me and my crew. So let's not mince words here. You had a confrontation with my away team in the Orion Sector. Now, I'm completely willing to allow bygones be bygones. But if you expect me to believe you don't know more than that you've already given to my chief of security, then you'd be wrong. So I'll allow you to do this one time and one time only. T tell me exactly this the tell me exactly the structure of your mirror universe contacts. What they know, who they know, and how I could find them. Do this, and I assure you that I'll give you a very I'll give you a very amenable sentence when it comes to your hearing. You might necessarily be able to go back to old stomping grounds. But if you don't, then I assure you, I'll use the powers vested within me to their full extent. And we both don't want to go down that road. Captain, I've been very clear with Mr. Helsing when I gave him the information. Folks was our lead into the... Folks was our lead into this alternate universe. All of our contacts flowed through him. Whatever is going oh. on on his on the other side of the universe died with him. Oh, but you're going to tell me that a woman in your position doesn't necessarily have alternate means of getting that information? Sure, folks may have been your only contact, and I might be t I might be tempted to believe that. But the information that you gathered here on this universe, on me, my crew, and other SI assets, is not something that could go unnoticed. And I doubt that you've had that you've had this information for a short period of time. I'd like dates, and I'd like people, and I'm losing my patience. Uh, roll me a, pro a presence plus command test, please. I would call this a negotiation. Possibly intimidation, whichever one you want. I am pulling up the wrong character sheet. <laughs> okay, hold up. <laughs> I would... Uh... I'd call this investigation, because okay. that's the one I have a focus for, <laughs> not intimidation. But I'd also uh, like to use my empathic powers in this Of course. In this sense. That makes sense to me. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of uh, one, because you'll probably need the momentum. <laughs> probably. That's two successes, so you get one momentum. Okay, so... As far so, uh, her eyes go a little bit wide um, as she begins to realize that you're not the typical Starfleet captains that the Orion syndicates are used to dealing with. Um, and what you're uh, look, 
Captain. Um, and she uh, ah, she spends a few minutes trying to pluck up her cool, calm, and collected facade, but it's not working. Possibly because um, there's a couple of uh, large bruises on the side of her face. Captain Falks may have not fully secured his computer systems. I have some contacts with some of the Orions and the Tholians on the other side of the universe, but that I don't see how that could help you, Captain. The data we got from yours that was sent directly to us. We didn't have to mine it through Falks systems. And Fox provided you with the data? No. All of it? No. Fox gave us... Fox had... Mm. <clears throat> Sorry. Fox ga... had us, you know, running all sorts of goods between the universes. Both legal and less than legal, depending on which side of the universe's laws you choose to interpret. But that data came from... An, it was... It was delivered to us. It arrived in my. Ah, it arrived through secure communication means, from a different source. And you know, if my facility was still in one piece and I was given enough time to collect all the information, I could have easily provided you more information through what relays it came. But as you can see, Captain, and she's makes a grand gesture of uh, indicating where she is now. I don't have that right now. And your empathic abilities are basically confirming what she's saying. Uh, she's saying uh, she believes that the information on you and your crew are not related to Fox or the Mirror Universe, at least to the best of her knowledge. Did you, or did your organization, or anybody else that was close to you, have any contact with the Zenkethi over the last three months? No. <clears throat> Sorry. Zenketh? I'm sure parts of the Orion Syndicate have... Ah. I'm sure part of the Orion Syndicate has contacts deep within the Zenkethi network, but my branch dealt primarily with Mere Universe... Uh, logistics. My counterpart over there was quite amenable when she and I spoke. Well, off the table, of course. We met through Falks. He facilitated the meeting. Let's get down to the end of it, shall we? How would you like this conversation to end? Hmm. Ideally, in a way that some, we both get we, what we want. Well, I would like this con conversation ending with w your attractive nurse uh, uh, using some of the Starfleet's much vaunted magical healing devices to restore me to my proper state of beauty and elegance. I would then like to be dropped off at a nearby neutral planet where I can then secure pickup. What would it take for me to get that outcome, Captain? It would take your assistance and any other further knowledge that you have with the events that will, will, that, will uh, that will transpire within the next 72 hours. Do that, and we'll see how this goes. Captain, I don't know what's going to happen in the next 72 hours. No, you don't. But we'll find out together, won't we? And if there's anything else that will, that will become uncovered or that you have a chance to eliminate on, I'm sure you would welcome it for your own benefit. And at that point, I'd like to step out of the cell and start walking away. She's got nothing else to yell out to me. Now's the time. She sits down in a huff and basically sits in resigned silence unless Mr. Helsing or Miss Joy wish to do anything about it. Well, if Mr. Helsing's not going to do anything. Well, at this point, I guess Helsing comes in. I didn't think I was 
in the room. I oh. come around the corner. I actually have a to figure out how to hide my face. It's taking me a while, and I'm wearing a rig that basically brings my shoulders up above where my head would be. So my head would be underneath where my sho- the shoulders are on this rig, with like a giant pumpkin head up on top. As I come around the corner, and I walk. I walk up in there, I hit the overhang, and the head rolls off, and I just continue to talk. Okay. You are it gives me some type of intimidation. Okay. Um, roll me a presence plus... Presence plus command? Presence plus security? One or the other. Just however many successes you get depends on how intimidated she is. Uh, persuasion as a focus. Mm, I, if you had bluff or disguise, I think that would work a little better, given the circumstances. Covert ops. Close enough. Undercover. Literally, in this case. And that's three successes. Cool. I will give you another point of momentum for that. So you're at two momentum. Right. She's. Come on, Isabel. I kept my end of the bargain. You're not seeing my face. Uh, Meet the captain. She laughs, but it seems to be more of a defensive response than actually finding anything funny. Is that you under the Helsing? Uh, You have a way of taking things so literally. I thought you might have been a Vulcan. Are you sure one of your grandmothers isn't a Vulcan, maybe? anything's possible she closes her eyes and leans back on the bed what is it you want my dear whatever the captain wants well the captain already got her the captain has already received his as much information as he can get out of me because I don't have anything else well I guess in addition to what you gave the captain you said you controlled all the logistics for the organization over on the mirror side? I was a contact. Well, sort of the the syndicate. I, I was the point of contact, yes. The syndicate ran its jobs, and if they needed anything, they would talk to Falks. Falks would talk to me, and I'd get things done everything that you have on how you got things done on this side and on that side of the divide. As I told the captain, if your pet chameleon thing wasn't, was, uh, or gave me some more time and had, I would be more than happy to give you any insight I could uh, in exchange for a certain degree of leniency and protection. However, I am unable to provide you those things because I am here. And by oh. now, following their... Now, by by now, I am considered by the Syndicate to be damaged goods. Which means, most likely, they will have destroyed my base, repossessed my followers, and... And most most importantly, they will probably have stopped paying me. Well, pen to paper, as we said on they said on Earth a long time ago, we can take anything that you had for what the operation was, and through the magic of what we do, it'll help. She. Uh, she swings her uh, legs up and s- in one fluid motion goes from a uh, flat back position to sitting up. Okay, Starfleet. I'll play your game. Why don't you, co- why don't you uh, let down this force field and come on in and we can talk. And at that point, you uh, the environmental monitoring system uh, by Singral and Joy chimes with an increase in Orion pheromones being produced and putting their there uh, and placing the cell into a biohazard lockdown. It's a beer. 
Ah, oh, shucks. Yeah. Well. And do you have a vaccine for that too, right? Oh, yes. You've, you, uh, Coox, or knowing what's going on, either Coox, Joy, or any one of the medical personnel have already injected you. Just saying. She smiles and said, it was worth a shot. I'd do the same if I was in your situation. Well, then pull out some of this pen and paper, Mr. Security Guy. I That's what we will. And pull up a chair. You're going to be a while. No, no, no. It, it'll... You, 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 have, you have time. And the security guy on detail is probably Yaz or somebody. Um, have him go fetch replicate pen and paper. <laughs> Good number two. All right. Okay. Uh, so that's going on. Uh, Bashir, Thashran, Ved, anything else you guys like? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I step on your toe, Singral? Yes, I one apologize. more thing before we step away. Yes. So, after uh, Helsing has finally sweet talked to Zabir to getting more information, I'd like to order Miss Joy that after the, after he's done receiving that, and if you don't necessarily if you don't foresee any further complications, I will Romulan mind probes on her. Sir, you those are incredibly invasive technologies. Are you abs where well, I have no guarantee that this is going to be a successful procedure? Well, in any case, I've been going through specific historical records and do you have you ever actually read the other classified stories of the NX01? Of course, in my area of expertise. I'm familiar with them. It's been some time. When Captain Archer had to go into the, the Zindi Expanse and actually trying to convince them that humanity wasn't the enemy while also trying to save Earth at the same time. Unfortunately, he had to take matters into his own hands that wasn't necessarily the most evolved of human aspects. But when we're faced with a great crisis, at times it may be necessary to do the unclean work. So as it is, our job is intelligence, and this woman has it in one way or another. If she's forthcoming, this wouldn't be a problem. And if she's not, then I need it, I need it out one way or another. What's going to happen in the next few hours is no, is no man's land. I don't know. And I need, I, I'm interested in having every piece of intel I could get. And if it's inside her head, and if she's unwilling to take it, or if she doesn't recall, then it's your job to get it out of her. Have I made myself clear? Perfectly, sir. If you find anything wrong with these events, or if you wish to protest, you may do so in your log. And once... We actually reestablish contacts with Starfleet. You're free to voice your opinions as we see fit. But until that time, it's you, this Orion lady, and the mind probes. The thing that I want in the next few hours is answers, one way or the other. And I walk out the door. She looks up to uh, Mr. Helsing who is pulling out a pen and paper and making sure that one actually writes. And she nods back to the captain. Sir, is he okay? What do you mean? Oh no, I'm, this is after you leave. I'm asking Helsing. Oh, sorry. The captain? Yes. He seems more determined than ever? Well, when you look at how deep this conspiracy could potentially go, where you have perfect copies of you, 
down to the DNA level, walking around doing who knows what, knowing what you know, eh, definitely, I can see him upping, upping the game. Now those mind probes, how how extreme is it? Well, it's not our. We I prefer the using using of truth serum. I believe that uh, Orions are particularly sensitive to uh, hydropisolate. Well, that would be could be sufficient if you don't believe that this woman is acting in good faith. The Romulan mind probes, it would take some... I'd have to pull up their schematics and replicate them. I've heard stories where if someone cooperates with the mind probes, they are left mostly unscathed. If they are not, if they resist the probes, and she just sort of does a bit of a sharp inhale... Let's just say that the probes yeah. take more of their memory. Uh, oh, they take the memory. Well, and the they, subject loses it. They well, they're the subject isn't left with much left up there, yeah, sir. Uh, well, knowing just a little time I had with Isabir, when she realizes what's happening, she will fight. And she will fight with everything she's got. Very well, sir. Um, she's going to be in there a while. Before start with the progression, I'm going to. I'll talk to the captain about the the Romulan mine probe, mine worms. Are they really worms? No, sir. That's something else that con that was used. Thankfully, that species is, to the best of my knowledge, extinct. Yeah. No, uh, it's a physical device, sir. It doesn't match any outfit. Okay, because my fear is she's still a valuable asset, even though she has been burned by the syndicate. Just her general knowledge of everything about the syndicate is invaluable to Starfleet Intelligence. And... You know, if she fights whatever the probe is and she loses that, well, we're just losing stuff we might be able to get other stuff in time. This is this is a conundrum that they've always had in interrogations, that ticking time bomb scenario, where how far do you go to how extreme an interrogation device to get what you need if the stakes are sufficiently high? And sadly, I think we're at that level. Rest assured, Mister. Rest assured, Commander, that I will be lodging a complaint with our through Doctor Coax, and I'll take my guidance from him on this on the matter when it comes to patient care. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'll talk to Doctor Coax on my way out as well. I think she's going to be a while on doing it by paper. Everything that she's got, if it's as much as I think she has. Very well. All right. And that I'll leave and I'll head to the co to let him know and then I'll go try to catch the captain. Okay. Uh, while that's going on, uh, what is Bashir, Sashran, and Orvaid up to? Bridge. On to the bridge. Okay. Anything in particular you're doing on the bridge? Nope. Just nope. got command. Okay. On the way to... Nimbus 3. Nimbus 3. Um, Lieutenant Vale. Is it still the uh, planet of uh, international or intergalactic peace? It was. <laughs> it was until the Borg turned it to, uh, basically blasted it to a molten uh, rock. Uh, there was an attempt to recolonize it approximately 10 years ago, but there just wasn't much left on the pl- on the planet. So... Instead, they decided to erect a rather large and garish monument to uh, the Federation, the Klingon, and the Romulans against the Borg. 
So that's why, and apparently underneath said monument lies a small covert uh, Starfleet intelligence listening post. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lieutenant Vaid, are you up to anything? Meditating. Meditating. Okay. Uh, Commander Thashran, or Lieutenant Commander Thashran. Uh, I have an idea for a scene with Helsing, but it's probably not taking place at the exact same time as this. Okay. Well, good news is that you have some time. So, uh, let's wrap up anything between um, the captain and Helsing. And then we'll have a scene with uh, Thishran and Helsing. Let's have a turbo lift scene. That's a, that's a good place to have a conversation. Okay. Captain, you're on the turbo lift, and... You are caught by Mr. Helsing. We have yeah. a turbo lift set? Oh my gosh. Sorry. Uh, have we ever used this? I don't think we have, actually. I've had <laughs> it on my list of maps and have never found the proper scene to have a turbo lift chat, but this might be one, so. <laughs> Alright. Cool. I got excited, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I've been on this ship this entire um, time. I never knew we had turbo lifts. Alright. Still trying to find the toilet in the hallways, but that's a different story. Ah, I, thought the, um, I thought the turbo lifts were on deck 15, but you know. Yeah. Have, you asked, have you asked the Horta on deck 12? He's a hell of a guy. <laughs> we haven't well, talked to him in a long time. No, you haven't. <laughs> still on board? Oh, yeah. He's down there just, of he's you know. Still on board. It's waste processing does explain, engineer. does explain some of the new holes we've seen in the hallway, in the passageway. Uh, so. All right. Focus. So. Hey, hey, sir. Yes, sir. I always I do. do the door as I come in. Um, Isavir. I spent a what little matter? bit more time on the way out talking to uh, to Nurse Joy. Is it really? Is it Nurse Joy? Yep, Nurse Joy. Mm -hmm. oh, God, come on, Pokemon flashback. Um, the Romulan mine mine probe could be a not quite a death sentence, but it could erase anything that she does have that we could use later. I'm talking to to her. She said that she felt that Orions are more susceptible to a a version of a truth serum that she has. I do recommend that we do a progressive approach and try the true serum first and work our way up to the final solution. Because once we, once you do the probes, it's, if you don't get what you want, and Isabir will fight. And if she fights, the chances are the mind probes will delete anything that she has in her, uh, in her, in her memory, and we'll lose it all. Mr. Helsing, it's not my intention to undermine the medical advice of our medical officers. However, at this point in time, information is what I am most concerned at, of. Interrogation is fine, and if she's being cooperative with you, then I see no problem. But I. <sighs> Even though she had, I, I don't sense any deception from her. But I do feel to say that there is still something else that she might have known that she just isn't telling us. I, agree. I don't think that's going to. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I have no delusions. I. I'm not living in a fantasy world. I don't think that whatever's hiding in her mind is suddenly the key to this conspiracy. But if it's one more piece of the puzzle. If it's one more thing that I could use to safeguard the Federation, then I need to I need to take the steps to make sure we could get it. I understand that this is an uncomfortable situation for some of us, but we didn't necessarily get into the line of work of the clandestine agencies if we wanted to if we wanted to play it safe. And if that's the case, we certainly wouldn't have gone off into space. Sir, you don't have to tell me that because. Lord knows that I've done things I never thought I'd do before just 
for, to protect those very same goals. And this is just something I think that if we work it incrementally and keeping the time pressure in mind, it's we just build it up because we don't want to permanently lose access to that if we can get it through a lesser means. It's a slippery slope, Mr. Helsing. One that I don't necessarily enjoy having the burdens of at all times, even though I'm the one in command. But in this case, my orders stand. By all means, work up progressively. Roger, but- I think Nurse Joy is a little bit confused. And I think she was prepping to go directly to to the uh, mind probe. But I- I'll, I'll make sure she understands. All right. Mind probes are there if we... D- if we have to, once we exhaust all other options, that doesn't. Nec- I don't. Let me be clear. If she if she cooperates, and you feel like you have sin- sufficient information from her, and I sense no further decep- and if I sense no further deception, then that's fine. But if we get into an engagement, and I feel like that she's holding out on me, we go there one way. Or, we go in there her head one way or the other. Roger. I'll make sure. I'll pass that on. To Nurse Joy, make sure Isabir understands the stakes. Please do. And if anybody else on the crew necessarily wants to ha- has uncomfortable feelings about the same event, please convey that message along as well. Will do. And because turbo lift uh, doors or turbo lifts move precisely at the speed of plot, the bridge doors open and the two of you exit out onto the bridge. Uh, if you don't need me here, sir, I'll go and pass that information down to the uh, captain on the bridge. Security cell. Security, cell. security cell. Very well. You know what you have to do, Commander. Roger. And I pass back in the turbo lift and head down and pass that information to the nurse and a similar conversation with Isabir. Fair enough. Okay. So another day passes. Uh, Isabir has given you a significant amount of information on at least her side of the uh, syndicate hierarchy uh, operations locations personnel she's a bit sketchy on anything that goes on above her rank but you know, there's still time to break her or convince her to play ball uh, so Thishran you had wanted to do something with Mr. Helsing yeah so I'll, I'll try to catch him at a quiet time and uh i was like um i don't know just catch him i guess catch, catch him somewhere where he doesn't have anything pressing quite at the moment sure mess hall yep you can find me at a table eating a bag of frost eating some frosted freaks and cold milk frosted hey. freaks ah frosted Thanks. freaks fucking that's what helsing is like hey helsing how's, how's it going i sit down at the table hey doing good Turn me on to these things. Things aren't too bad. You want a bowl? Uh, in a in a bit, in a in a bit. So yeah, sure. Yeah. This is, uh, hmm. You know, I'm I'm usually not not one to uh to beat around the bush, but this is a, a, a bit of a different conversation. I call around, make sure no one is um like with an with an earshot. You know, um, remember that whole business with the uh the. Exp- Kabooms, explosions, the detonator, and, and all that. Mm-hmm. Y- you know, funny thing is, uh, I, I actually had a look over at the um, the detonator after the uh, the mission, and uh, funny enough, um, it seems like it was triggered. What do you think about that? Yeah, it was triggered by Helsing. Yeah, except the one you had was seems like it was manually detonated no just curious to get your get your perspective on that yeah um he looks around over the shoulder make sure no one's no one's around just wooler polishing drinks or polishing a uh, glassware Give Wooler the the nod, like don't get kind of invoke the cone of silence around us. He decides that it's is 
suggest that he uh, descend into the uh, storeroom below deck to retrieve more glassware. Yeah. I pushed it. Care to explain that, considering, you know, all the um, <coughs> collateral damage? I still have a good good reason for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I pushed the cereal away from me. Call it a momentary lapse of faith. I didn't think we were going to get Fox on our own. With everything going on, we kept running into more and more hurdles and obstacles as we got closer up there. He, I knew he was going to get away. And if he got away, the alternate mirror me what he did to you he was going to do worse to my sister he gave me that detonator I think he he knew I was going to push it because he knew what was in believe me I haven't been a minute not thinking about this bringing it again and again in my head he I, the only reason he set the bombs up as he did is because he knew he couldn't get him. And that was the only way he knew it could be done. I I can't say I don't know where you're coming from. Consider I I know how, how important it is to to protect the, the ones close to you, but also I wish that, that you had in, entrusted with like, you know, with, with the rest of the team. To, to find a solution for this without resorting to to this level. Yeah. I know. Everything that happened after the bomb went off, I knew that anybody up on that floor would be out. But anybody up there was was written off anyways. What happened afterwards, everything with the Isabir and being down in her subterranean lair. Yeah. Would that have happened if I that, didn't push the button? Don't know. That that whole part of Isabir, I, I can't exactly blame you for that. That was beyond anyone for seeing. It, I guess I'm at least relieved that 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 you were certain that there there weren't any any incidents in, in the way when you when you triggered the explosion. It it was still kind of a reckless because there's no way you can be 100 percent certain. But I'm I'm glad that your heart was at least in the right place and you you did consider it first. But so having having said that, I I feel like we've we've worked together long enough now that I, I have a sense of your your character and you know pe- people are like onions. Another another one of those famous metaphors we got there. Was that and, in your briefing? Uh, oh, it, it, it that was. One. You you can ask. Uh, you can ask Vade about it. If it's, uh, right. I, I was thinking about expanding the um, the presentation outwards after this whole this whole kerfuffle is over with. But um, you know what? I f- okay. Promise me one thing. After this whole thing is done, I want you to go and, and see someone and talk to them about it. I. I'm worried that you know, with all the, the pressure we've been through, if you keep if you keep going through this, you're gonna crack one of these days. Like, we're, we undergo all this pressure all the time, and you in particular, you're you're tasked with defending everyone on the crew, and you're under immense amounts of stress. Like, let me tell you, th- that was an important lesson I, I learned from, from my Klingon Kung Fu master. Even he taught that lesson. You know, after he broke my nose and chin and wrist, but regardless, even he recognized the the importance of uh, of managing to uh, confine someone and get these things off your chest before it it explodes. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's something I've been noticing too. And one thing that the XO kind of said, it's kind of like tripped me. Kind of, it went, we're down in the, in the, what was that, the bazaar where the holographic generators were. We almost got, um, we tried to get mugged by the uh, Orion gang. And I shot the the leader of the group. I'm not even thinking about it. One thing I've always tried to be, and that's I drill into my security team, is that we're the the guard dogs for for the ship. We're out there. We protect the operatives, our scientists engineers anything that we're doing we've got on these missions we're there to protect you all but what happens when that guard dog becomes an attack dog that's something i don't want to do and when i shot that gang leader i didn't think it just knew from things like that happened when i was growing up very similar situation. I was on that other end, and not even thinking twice about it, because I knew you take out the head, the rest of the gang would pretty much crumble. And they started to. We had to take out a couple more of them, but Starfleet were not taught that. But in intelligence, it's we got to go a different. I mean, this is a conversation I just had with the captain a little while ago. Much higher stakes apply. Yeah, I get that. I mean, we all know how how tough uh, the stuff we're going through right now is, but I'm glad you're thinking about it. And uh, but yeah, like like I said, just just promise me after all this is over, you'll you'll talk to someone about this. I I, I really think you you do need to to confide in someone so you can get you can you know de stress a bit. Um, tell you what, check on me in a couple of days. And if I haven't done it by then, call me out on it again. And you might have to hit me with a two by four, but you have to replicate it first. And I don't know, will the replicators do a two by four? It'd be a short one. Maybe if you use the industrial replicators, you can get a longer one, but, um, just, you might have to whack me between the eyes with one sometimes, but. Before all the stuff settles down, I'll make sure I go see the counselor. I just found right, out that I'll hold you to it. was a counselor too. Yeah, go figure. If if I don't if if I find out that you haven't been been going, then I'm gonna have to uh, track you down it and um, bring up my, my therapy um, polka dance. Oh God! So it's, it, it's a extreme but uh, very effective. Um, tool I've, I've found in the past strangely enough no one ever volunteers to go for a second round despite um how how good it is at convincing people you know we might have to include you in the interrogation of isabir possibly their show sure doesn't come out with any good results we'll keep that in mind so All right thing to keep in her back pocket well Anyways, I'm sure we both got the things to do, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll grab a I'll grab a bowl of um, flakes and, and milk to, to go. But um, I just wanted to check in with you. Make make sure you're okay, Helsing. I, I know how much you, you how much time you spend in uh, protecting all of us. So I got to make sure someone's looking out for you too. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. All right, remember I'll check in a couple of days. Kind of all right. Give Thanks. me finger guns as I walk out with my my bowl. And. If he turns around and walks out the door, I push the bowl a little bit further away, and I just kind of put my elbows on the table and put my head in my hands. Not crying, just kind of oh. shaking my head. Oh my god, what have I gotten myself into? That Yeah, that type. Yeah, that is understandable. Slippery slope, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, okay, so... Another day goes by, and on the bridge, uh, Jefferson Davis reports that you are reaching 
Uh, you are approaching Nimbus 3. Alright. On screen. On screen. Uh, sorry, just have to refresh my roll 20. Part of it had crashed. Okay. Planet Nimbus 3. Once the center of galactic peace, uh, residing uh, just slightly inside the borders of Federation space, but equidistant to the intersection of Romulan and Klingon space, Nimbus 3 was once the planetary for intergalactic peace between the three powers. And so it was for uh, several, uh, almost a century, I believe, maybe longer, uh, before the Borg invasion of 2380s decided to reduce it to a pile of molten rock and whatever gases were left behind were completely unbreathable. Uh, there was a failed attempt at recolonization, uh, supposed to be a... Um, joint venture between the Federations, the Romulans, and the Klingons, but politics and other uh, and other things just got in the way. So they decided to erect a quick monument and move on. It was a very nice press conference, and now most people don't remember Nimbus 3 at all, which is why Starfleet Intelligence has erected a very small listening post relatively close to the... Um, to the, uh, to the statue. Alright. Maintain communications block out. Hirani, I'd like scans of the planet and the listening post. Here are the coordinates. Tell me if you pick up any other light signs or background signals. Alright, so if someone could please pick up Rani. Or maybe Vade, either or. Um, this is going to be an insight plus... Uh, insight medicine test for life signs. Ship can assist with sensor science. And this is going to be a difficulty of two. Yeah, it can also do it. I mean, it's either, yeah. either one. Okay, uh, that is two successes and one complication. That's enough to get it, so... <clears throat> okay, so, Vaid, what you see on the planet is uh, it is under a significant amount of shrouding, uh, active camouflage, and possibly some sort of less than legal um, cloaking technology, but uh, station or listening post station named Nimbus 3 is active. You only see the two life signs of the that correspond with the two operatives that are stationed at this glorious resort. However, in doing so, well, they, by scanning them, they detect you. And it's not long until the USS Nighthawk is hailed from the surface. My apologies, sir. <laughs> well, that's all right. Hopefully, I mean, let's proceed carefully and... Let's make sure that they're not compromised. In any case, send no reply. I'd like to prepare transporters, and I'd like an away team. Actually, I don't want an away team. If there's only two people here at the listening post, I want them being to the ship. I can tell that everyone is eager to implement that action, Captain. <laughs> Uh, but sir, if we bring them up, we'll be manning the listening post. We will. It's uh, we're we're gonna beam them up and beam the away team down. Should have been more clear about that. My apologies, but yes, beam the away team down to the listening post. <laughs> beam, beam the listening post squad to the ship. I want to make sure uh, that they're not compromised. All right, I'll take uh, the Sharan and Vaid and the security and beam down to the listening post while okay. they're beamed on board. Okay. <clears throat> um, I don't actually have tokens for these individuals because I was not anticipating a complete kidnapping of Starfleet personnel. <laughs> but, you know, well, that teaches me for assuming. <laughs> that, there's, a, there's a galactic conspiracy going on. I need to know who I could trust. There is I indeed. Mean, 
Okay, so kidnapping, emergency redeployment. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I am. I mean, I'm. I'm Starfleet intelligence captain. I'm sure there's somewhere in these provisions that give me the idea, the authority of you know if the Federation is under attack or something like that. I must be able to redeploy assets or something along those lines. Well, Somebody else here. As long as it works. <laughs> yeah, as long as it works. I suppose that's a thing. Okay, so we are going to the uh, transporter room, where Mr. Uh, Bashir, a couple security guards, and probably Thashran going down to this. Thashran or Rani? Because Rani has communications. Probably Rani. Keep me up here on the ship. All right. Especially uh, after that failure. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll have Loxley and Hanara go down. Loxley and Hanara. Okay. So not Mr. Zonar. We'll have Miss Loxley. Okay. Nobody else here on the planet, dude, so, you know? Yeah, basically. You say that now. Okay, so these two beam down, or these... Uh, Commander Bashir, you beam down. And at the same time, two very startled individuals are beamed on board. I don't have any tokens. Let's say one is a human male, and the other one is a Vulcan female. Their dress code is apparently very casual. Uh, both are wearing uh, t-shirts and shorts or something very much similar to that. Because who the heck is going to bother with dress code when there's only two of you? Uh, they're very startled by this uh, sudden translocation. Uh, the Vulcan immediately reaches down for her phaser, only to realize that it has been taken away by the transporter beam. Uh, the human, uh, let's call him uh, Malloy. Now, what is the meaning of this? I understand your concern. My name is Captain Sengrol of the Starship Nighthawk. Under emergency Starfleet precision, pr provision X218 Black, I'm hereby inspecting this listening post for evidence of potential, of potential uh, treason. I apologize for the sudden disruption, but in this case, the ship is under a communication blackout. If you follow me to the conference room and you answer the rest of my crew's questions, I can assure you'll be kept up to date on the situation. In, in my case, in your case, don't worry about your positions. I've beamed down members of my away team to man the listening post. There's a bit of a stunned silence from Malloy as he looks to his uh, partner. Uh, she raises an eyebrow and says, Well, this, that seems like a very logical request, Captain. We will follow you. After all, you currently have tactical superiority. And this is the most interesting thing that has happened in the last 312 days. Well, I don't take it personally. I mean, if I, if I got an assignment like this... To be honest, I'd be stunned, but let's be honest, between you and me, I'm a little bit excited, right? What happened on that other day? Well, that was, we had both a Romulan transport ship and a Klingon transport ship passing in the same general direction. <laughs> yep, that'd qualify. Okay, so, while that happens above ground, oops, those aren't copy. I've been GMing for a year. You'd think I'd have the token shortcut keys down. But I don't. All right. So, on the planet of Nimbus 3, it is a... Uh, what you find is a station that is mu not much larger than a Danube-class runabout. Uh, there are two bunks in the back. Uh, there is one uh, latrine... Uh, situation. There's one latrine situation, and then there is a bank of consoles, all indicating a, a significant amount of communications, uh, encryption, decryption, uh, spatial, and, you know, all the fun stuff that one would expect in a listening post. Uh, right. Let's get to, to the computer and see what we can find. Okay.
Okay, why am I having trouble memorizing this? Object layer. There we go. Okay, uh, if someone could please pick up Rani and roll right. me a. Um, <clears throat> if you could please roll me a insight plus engineering, please. That's only one success. I'm afraid that there, the computer lockdown appears to be uh, fairly significant. It has detected the departure of its um, authorized personnel and has not yet received any transfer requests for new personnel, and therefore have locked the uh, they have locked the console from any outside access. Seems like Vade's unluckiness is rubbed off on me. <laughs> rubbed <laughs> off on me. <laughs> Everything's fine here. Situation normal. How are you? Ah. <clears throat> okay. Well, actually, go. Sir, do you have any way to, to hack in? Percussive maintenance? Well, if you have to have like computer maintenance or something like that, that could Explosive. work. <laughs> gadgetry? I don't think gadgetry is what you want right now. Uh, <coughs> or explosives, for that matter. The <laughs> share just shut the Hanara gets a sad face. <laughs> uh, sorry, what were you saying there, Thishran? The oh, share just Thishran. Ah. Uh, Thishran here. So we can't access the computer here. Do you have something you could send down? <laughs> if you spend those, yeah. if you spend yeah. those two momentum, I will. Can we, yeah, can we create an advantage that we can? Uh, <laughs> you certainly have can. something to send down. <laughs> That'd be great. All right, so two momentum, and I'll send them down my handy dandy custom uh, hacking tool. Okay, your head. Uh, your Hackatron 3000 is beamed to the surface. Uh, what the Shran has sent you, uh, Bashir, is definitely not Starfleet issue. Looks like a pass dispenser. Yeah. Complete with the wobbling Andorian head. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you place it in one of the data input jacks. It buzzes. Um, Let's out an R two D two sounding squeal. <laughs> uh, it sort of blows itself up, but at the same time, it unlocks the uh, computers. Uh, it, lo it unlocks the computer banks. So, uh, specifically looking for communications and uh basically um with the uh anything that can help us figure out you know this right uh right no okay. i'm trying to say. uh so because you created the advantage uh you the those details are uh literally right in front of you uh logs of <laughs> uh, logs of intelligence assets passing back and forth uh, USS Silent Vigil passed this through this way approximately two weeks ago. Uh, its coordinates would place it approximately uh, uh, two sectors away, directly in between the Klingon and Romulan uh, space. Um, and the details of its mission are fairly classified, but it does mention that the uh, it was accompanied by the USS uh, Black Shield and the USS Naginata. the ships that were silent. Yes. Okay. Fair enough. Anything strange and unusual? Any sort of communications? Any sensor readings? Anything coming through that is not normal for this quiet out of the place? Um... So roll me insight plus 
I want to say insight plus con, maybe, or, or insight security. Let's do insight security. Um, you, uh, one person can assist, and this is going to be a bit of a, this is going to be a difficulty of four. Oh. So who's taking the lead it's here? Like, I'm going to take the lead because I'm doing it. Um, not that it's the good rolling choice, mm -hmm. but... Uh, All right, and who's assisting? We'll let... Uh, well... Mm -hmm. Rainy, I'll give you another chance. Yeah. Uh, so pattern recognition in us, signal analysis, communications, stuff like that would work for focuses. Okay. Comes. Is it the same role? Uh, in uh, yes, security. yeah, insight security. That's one success from Bashir. That's only two successes, I'm afraid. You're not able to see anything out of the ordinary with uh, searching through these logs. You're basically trying to um sort through a heck of a lot of unsorted information with very little in the way of parameters. Um, it's like trying to find a single error code when on verbose mode of debugging something. It's just very difficult unless you know what you're looking for. And I'm afraid none of you guys really know what you're looking for. All right. Can I copy these logs and have like someone say, oh, the binars go through this information? <laughs> You are more than welcome to do so. Okay. Uh, can I have someone on the ship? So probably Thashran. Roll me a control plus engineering, and the ship will assist with compu uh, with communic ah, with comms plus engineering. And this will be a difficulty of two. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, so these, what uh, begins to happen is you, um, actually, um, Mr. Bashir, can you please roll me one D one hundred, please? Okay. So I go in and type. Yep. Slash roll one d one hundred. All right. Uh, so the data uh, transfer begins and appro reaches approximately twenty two percent. At which point the security override detects the presence of an unauthorized data mass data transfer, shuts the system down and alerts local operators to a potential security threat. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, considering that there are no other two guys, sir, upstairs yeah. on the ship the only <laughs> security that's being notified is so we got hardly any information from it whatsoever so basically yeah yeah okay works for me all right this is a bust we're going home <laughs> <laughs> i don't think there's anything else we can find in this little bunker uh they have well You know what? Basically, I'm going to have security like look over their stuff real quick while we're here okay. to see if there's anything in particular that if they seem fishy, you know, Okay. Uh, boots with magnetic locks or anything else. Or... Right. Uh, Nara's eyes kind of perk up when you say fishy. I'm pretty sure there isn't a fish within a thousand light year or within, a, you know, a hundred light years of your current location. But, you know. Um, yeah, so if uh, Loxley or Hanara wants to do an insight security roll, and I'm going to do this, uh, there's uh, this is going to be difficulty zero because it's such a small space. 
likes to go ahead and do it. Okay. And I'll use one of those them thar momentum thingies. You have no them thar momentum None. thingies. That's why we don't, have, we don't have them anymore. That's nope. why I yeah, because yeah. I used the two to create the advantage and I couldn't. Oh, that's, that's and then I, I that's what I said. That's it okay. hasn't been able to help us. I haven't been able to use any to help with any of these other roles. So yeah, we got. If I may and, quote, if I may quote Spaceballs, we ain't found shit. Oh, uh, Tim Russ. Um, infiltration? Internal security. Ooh, internal security sounds good. <coughs> okay, that's one momentum. Cool. Uh, Loxley, you do a, a, a thorough search of all their belongings. Uh, you find a... Uh, you find the standard armament. Uh, so two Type 2 phasers, uh, two EVA suits... Uh, series or two sets of body armor. Uh, you also find a series of a dirty interspecies relationship magazines, uh, which ironically you find within the Vulcan females storage area. I give uh, that raised eyebrow mm-hmm. thing that Vulcans typically do. Uh, I'll, so- I'll I'll take that. I I'll I'll confiscate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, sir. Uh, there. Other than that, this place is pretty squeaky clean. Okay. Even those hidden areas are bound to have? Well, even the hidden... That was, that was the space porn. Alright, are... time to beam up. <laughs> That's usually under the pillow or under the back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's just say that you find, a, you find, you know, things that make you inquisitive, but obviously things that are not related to the conspiracy. Okay. Uh, is there any well, is that temporal quantum signature differences to signify the mirror? There's none. Helsing was talking to me about that. None? Nope. Okay. Okay. Back on the ship. Uh, let's see. Back in. Are, are we totally locked out of the the computer system? So the listening post ain't listening. Um. So you're not locked out. The communi- the data transfer was just shut down. Ah, Whatever right, access so you had before, you still have. Work. It's just. Okay. Uh, anything else, Commander Bashir, or are we heading back to the ship? Heading back to the ship. Okay. All right, you find yourselves back in the transporter room. Uh, Chief Zell looks at you and goes, "Well, that was fast, sirs. Uh, everything okay?" Much to find. Understood, sir. Uh, the captain and the commander are have taken our guests to the conference room. All right, I'll head to the conference room. Okay. Up to the conference room, because GM's just sifting through these things like a deck of cards. <laughs> well, let's see. So we have... Okay. Uh, so, Captain and Commander are busy with uh, the t- uh, Malloy and Tulul. Or, no, sorry, not Tulul, because uh, that's eerily close to another name I'm using already. Let's call her Tess- Tessal. Malloy and Tassal are your guests in this conference room. They're sort of just staring across from you. Malloy is leaned back with his arms crossed, whereas uh, Tassul is leaning forward uh, with her uh, fingers interlaced just on top of the table. Well, I understand that this is an unconventional sequence of events right now, but I need you to answer me honestly, as if you were going to do anything else. Can you tell me about the last 30 days? No, I'm sorry. Can you tell me about the last 60 days of your time here at the Nimbus 3 listening post? Have you picked up any un- Have you picked up any suspect communications? 
whether they be Federation or otherwise. The, let's see, how would they answer? Yeah. Uh, let's actually get some tokens uploaded here quickly. Um, Malloy leans uh, back, his or leans forward, his arms still crossed. Captain, we haven't seen anything in the... The only interesting information that we've seen in the last several weeks was the USS Silent Vigil coming across. Uh, she transmitted her orders as per... Or she transmitted her orders and her destination as requested, but the information... Ah, but the mission parameters were kept private. As is... How, as is how it is, sir. And only the silent vigil passed through the system? Oh, she had two escorts with her, sir. Uh, I believe they were the Black Shield and the Naginata. And so you never had verbal communication with them? Was this all done through computer? Yes, digital sir. orders. Di di all right, so digital confirmation and receipt only. Yes, sir. When is the last time you've been transferred from the Nimbus Three listening post? Uh, well, sir, I have, been, sir, I have been on station since. Uh, he quickly looks at a Tassol or Tassol. Uh, approximately eighty days. Uh, she's been here almost a full year, sir. Do you recall the location that the silent vigil said they were going to? It's in the communication log, sir. I don't remember offhand. Well, I mean, considering that's the only interesting thing that's happened within the past few weeks. I know. In any case. I know they were flying between the Romulan and Klingon borders. That's... I don't know precisely the sectors. All right. Well, uh... I'd like to both GM question, and I'd like to do this in character, pulling up, uh, pulling up a star chart. Yes. Uh, the location that the star silent vigil to, reportedly, has uh, these two individuals are telling me. Right. Do they? When? When does that information of them going into Romulan space correspond with any of our previous missions? Does is that closer to the Zinketi? I'm sorry, not the Zinketi. Yeah. Uh, does that correspond to the Badlands or the Orions? Before that, actually, uh, I'm trying to think of when we when we shadowed that diplomatic uh, Tholian. That's what ah. I'm thinking. Well, either any of these missions. Um, so they entered. Uh, they entered after the Tholian. After you uh, shadowed the Tholians, um, they entered shortly. Uh, so while when you came back from the mirror universe is roughly the time that they started their sojourn in. So I be okay. if I believe if I'm tracking my star dates right and let's face it, sometimes a little I'm a little loosey goosey. Uh, that okay. would be approximately two weeks pushing three weeks now. Alright. And that's their last known heading is towards Rumble Space. Correct. Okay. Well, in any case if there's nothing else that you need to, if there's nothing else that you, any of you two necessarily would like to illuminate for me, I want to point out that this is on the record. You're not being charged with anything, but it would be most definitely be helpful for this sh starship's current mission. And about this time, uh, enters uh, Commander Bashir. Nothing to report, Captain. We've uploaded uh, a small chunk of their data, and that's really about it. Well, you were able to also pinpoint where the um... and where they were heading. Yeah, yeah. As I say, we do have the coordinates where the three ships were heading. All right then. Well, Malay, Taloy, I'm giving you secret encrypted orders. And this is going to be the most interesting thing that has happened to you since you stood here. And probably, most likely, your career. If any other Starfleet 
Romulan, Zankethi, or Tholian vessel passes through this system or listening post, and you guys have eyes and ears on it, I'd like you to send an encrypted communique to the Nighthawk. You are not to have contact with any other Starfleet vessel, unless it's for typical confirmation of orders. But if that's the case, you must notify the Nighthawk first and foremost. If possible, I'd like you, if such a thing were to happen, you are ordered to stall any incoming vessels. I understand normally it's just a simple receipt of current orders, but have a little bit of delay in and don't hesitate to call. I have reason to believe that Starfleet intelligence and the silent visual has been compromised. If I am under suspicion of either of you aiding and abetting what I believe to be the suspects, I will not hesitate to charge you with treason and sedition. Uh, Satul raises or raises an eyebrow and sits even more ramrod straight in her chair. Understood, Captain. Be aware that because that this is all above board, we will be noting these new orders in our log. You may note them in your log as you wish, but you are again, you are not to necessarily send your logs to anybody else but the Nighthawk. Understood. In any case, not that I necessarily don't trust you, but you guys have been here for a while. So, if there's anything else that you'd like from the Nighthawk, any, anything you'd like replicated, new personnel, if you want to possibly catch up on the ongoings of the Federation, you may do so, but I must warn you that there is a communication back out in place, so no outgoing communications. Additionally, for the duration of the next few weeks, I'd like to leave an actual... They're here alone. If uh, since it's a, since it's an interesting time right now, I want to leave other people at the listening post, anonymously, just minor minor personnel, just so we have more people here. The two sort of look at each other, and a quick communication of eyebrows and stares that only people trapped together for a long period of time can understand, and. Aside from that, uh, Captain Singral, you're able to uh, pick up c mostly on Malloy's thoughts. Um, well, first of all, he's not entirely sure he wants his privacy further interrupted, but he doesn't get a say in the matter. Uh, Satul is far more interested in what a th or what other people may bring to this. Uh, more people bring to this uh, situation. And then they both come to an agreement and look at you simultaneously. Very well, Captain, Malloy says. If we're to head back down there, I would, if I may request a, a series of drinks from the bar. Something with proper alcohol, of course. The replicator does not do... The replicated synth the hall runs dry and begins... Begins tasting extremely boring after a while. I can understand that. Let's see if we can hook you up with any more further rep rep replicator recipes. And if you have no need of maintenance or a small upgrade, then we'll be able to do so. But you're not going to. When the Nighthawk is not going to be here at Nimbus Three very long, so this this briefing is over. And you're dismissed. Get your affairs in order. The Nighthawk leaves in two hours. Sure. And with that, they both stand up and leave. We have two um, security personnel, junior, uh, one junior enlisted and one ensign we can mm -hmm. send down there, sir. Lieutenant Rouge Chamise and um, Chief Petty Officer Rota Hemden. <laughs> well, that's uh, as long as we have Nighthawk personnel available, that eases my burdens a bit. Call the rest of the senior staff to the conference room. Let's go over what we know. Very well. Can we get can we get a special alert for that? And you know, we have black alert. Can we have a like a symbol in the conference room alert? Yes, it's called all hands. Get your asses in here now. <laughs> uh, 
Speaking of all hands, all hands have assembled. All right. So let's go ahead and collate the information that we know so far. Currently, I, it's come to my attention and some of the rest of you as well that Stifling Intelligence has been compromised. We have evidence with, this, with the Tholians and our evidence and our recent encounter with the Zenkethi has just confirmed our suspicions. Not counting our mirror universe. Well, additionally, it seems like our mirror universe counterparts happen to be involved. Although the complete extent of them as unknown, we have uncovered some individuals. To this, to this date, to my knowledge, there are a actively working against our interests happen to be, for lack of a better term, mirror housing. <laughs> a mirror version of myself, mirror Chalmers, and a few other individuals that you guys have met during your excursion to the mirror universe. At this point in time, it seems likely that the SI ship Silent Vigil has been compromised. A few weeks ago, she left for Romulan space along with escorts, along with the crew of the USS Naganata and USS Black Shield which we have encountered before in the past. I am currently trying to weed out whatever this opposition may or may not be. And it's, we're still dealing with a bunch of unknowns. I do plan to take the, I do plan to take the Nighthawk into Romulan space to find them. But if we do, we need a good reason why we're gonna be there. And we gotta make sure that it doesn't necessarily go wrong. There's going to be three of them and one of us. Any other thoughts? Well, if there's no other thoughts, then let me continue. I would like the USF Nighthawk to I, want, I would like our ID signature changed. Obviously, if we if the if we actually do manage to find the silent vigil, we there it's going to be suspicious if we come as anybody else. And in that case, we will identify them in Nighthawk. But in any case, as we start building a cover story together, I'd like a likely suspects or possibly a list of likely and unlikely suspects in ship transponder codes that we can use. In, in case of our diversion. Additionally, since those other ships do have active uh, camouflage technology similar to ours, I wanna make sure that if we are approaching under black alert, that we don't show up on their sensors. So that's a task for you, Mr. Thrishan. Keep us hidden from our allies because we don't know if they're our allies for very long. Got it. We can't go over there with boarding party. So if we do encounter the silent vigil, not only do I want to be prepared potentially for combat, but we need to make sure we have a, we have an opportunity to beam over there and figure out exactly the crew's intentions. So in this case, whether it is a ship inspection or new orders because that they can't receive because they're under a, a supposed communication blackout. Whatever necessarily happens there, the, I it has to be specific individuals, or a person in command, or a person close to command. Likely on the silent vigil, but we can't rule out the other two starships. At this point in time, get the I like the I like the crew. All members of the crew and everybody capable of the away mission to study the schematics of all three vessels if we need to move in there under the under the guise of stealth if we need to transport in there and figure out or possibly scan for specific personnel or mirror activity or what have you one way or another we need to find a we need contingencies Again, that will fall to Miss Lieutenant Vaid to come up, come up with a plan like, such as that. Commander Bashir, in the event 
that any of these starships have been compromised and we have the ability to you will be you will assume command of them is that clear yes captain all right one way or another hopefully it will go off smoothly without a hitch but it likely wouldn't but again we're not here going there blends blazing and we're not going to go there to demand their attention we got to figure out a way to get in there figure out whether or not it's true or not and then if necessary take the precautions i'd like to gm i'd like to do a uh command roll okay and uh, see if i could uh actually find the prefix codes for these starships ah that will be a uh insight plus command please and the uss nighthawk can assist with computers plus command and this is going to be a difficulty of three i would definitely say ship tactics or yeah. undercover operation works here yeah either works um let's see that's nothing from the nighthawk and only one no. success from mr singral so i'm afraid that the prefix codes for starfleet intelligence vessels are currently unavailable um, they are uh, these things require i will say that these uh, to access the command codes of other starfleet intelligence ships you will have to make a direct communication request to Starfleet Intelligence Headquarters. Not necessarily in the mood to do that at the moment. Understandable. Obviously, but uh, I'll keep that in mind. So in any case, on the medical front, I'd like to make sure we could perfect or at least fine-tune our methods of determining our counterparts or any other alternate universe activity. So that's Koax's job. Vaid, you already have your assignment. Commander Bashir, you know what needs to be done as soon as we actually get into contact with these other ships. And Mr. Helsing, if necessary, it's your job to collate the information and prepare us for a standoff. I don't necessarily relish the idea of firing on other Federation vessels or other Federation vessels firing on us but we're not necessarily in the typical aspect right now. So be prepared. And if there is a way, even if we don't have prefix codes, if, if you understand these ship systems and you could find a way to shoot through these shields or at least disable them, their vessels, now is the time. The Nighthawk is going to leave Nimbus 3 in two hours. You all have your orders dismissed. Okay. And that sounds like a good time to take a quick break um because we still have a lot to get through let's only make it a 10 minute break so let's be back at 10 to the hour and we will see you guys momentarily And we are back. So, uh, so uh, the captain has laid out several tasks for some of you. Uh, so, Mr. Thishran, uh, I believe he wanted you to look at changing the uh, transponder codes of the USS Nighthawk. Uh, that's going to be mm -hmm. a daring engineering task. Can uh, daring plus or no control plus engineering, with a difficulty of two. And the ship can assist with structure plus engineering. Uh, no, let's do structure plus security for the ship. Okay. Um, and this is a scene change, so you lose one momentum. Oh, so no momentum, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Okay, so Lies, it's you're not sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that is one success from Nighthawk and one from Thishran. Okay, uh, Thishran, you have accessed the transponder signal and found out that by running about uh, a couple megavolts through it, you're able to 
basically successfully randomize what the number is. Good. Yep. Uh, Miss Vaid is going to work on the life sci- or the mirror universe detection stuff. Uh, this is going to be a control plus science, please. And the ship can assist with sensors plus science. Uh, the, again, difficulty of two. Big money. Okay, that's three successes already, and one from the ship. So two momentum for you guys. Um, they, were, I am uh, Mr. Helsing was already talking about cool ways of uh, defeating the silent vigil. So we'll deal with that if and when it comes to it. Um. I believe that's everything. Have I missed anything, uh, Singral? Uh, besides the uh, follow-up with the medical staff, I mean, they was taking point on Mary Universe stuff, but medical stuff as well, just to necessarily prepare to, if we encountered any mirror personnel or Okay. Unfortunately, something goes wrong. I just want sickbay it ready. Okay, that's easily enough. Uh, Coox can prep sickbay well enough. And... Good. No, what I definitely have to say, next comes last, so go for it. Well, I, I need to talk with uh, Vade and Thrashran. Okay. Uh, anywhere in particular you want to do this chat? Um... Science lab? Sure. Got some sciencey stuff we got to do. I like sciencey lab stuff. Let's do science lab. We don't go there enough. Well, apparently you guys were the last ones in here, so. Okay. In their natural habitat. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. All right. Captain wanted to come up with ways to get through the shields of the um, the three ships. A couple ideas I had. One was shooting the torpedoes, capturing with the transporter, using the advanced transporters to beam them on the inside of the shield. That seems a little bit hard hard to do, probably. Other one I had, this is really what I think might be more feasible, is can we change the warhead? Whereas instead of being, you know, in anti-armor penetration and attacking the ship's hull, to be more of a means to overload a ship's shields. Like it pumps so much energy into it and it just knocks shields out. Can't be that difficult. That sounds very doable. We might be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. So that way it gives us a, potentially a better negotiating position with the ships. We have shields and they don't. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, that's going to require some work on a couple torpedoes ahead of time. Yep. So we have to segregate a couple out of our stock okay uh so this is definitely going to be a control engineering task um and helsing can assist with control security this is going to be a difficulty uh difficulty of three okay so i'll spend a moment to get an extra die then sure thing Shipboard tactical systems as a focus? Yeah, I'll let that fly. Yep. Do we uh, have momentum? Uh, we got one of those momentum, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to use one. Okay. That's two from Helsing. You know your torpedoes, man. And that's three from Thishran. So that's five successes. Uh, so that one momentum you spent, you get it back, plus one more that followed at home. So two momentum total. Um, Thishran, could you please nice. roll me 1d4, please? Okay. 
Okay, uh, you have a grand total of four of these torpedoes. Uh, so what they're going to do is they will uh, they will do an additional two points, or you get to roll an additional two challenge dice, but that damage only goes towards dealing shield damage, not towards breaches or anything else like that. And seeing as these aren't lethal, technically, would they still cost threat? Yes. Yes, they do. Okay. Just asking. I mean, it's worth a shot, but no. All torpedoes cost a uh, threat. <clears throat> nice. Yeah. So. This, this could come in handy. Okay, so. As uh, I'm just going to bring up a map of whereabouts you guys are. Before we head off. Yes. Uh, the, the thing that I whispered you earlier on. Mm -hmm. um, would I, That's a potential if, we, if I wanted to invoke it now or no. I'm not sure that's possible given how that series ended. Gotcha. Okay, well in yep. that case... Forget about it then. Okay. Uh, consider it forgotten about. So, uh, anyways, you guys are currently leaving the Nimbus sector, and you are the last location, last or the um, operational theater for the USS Silent Vigil was straddling the Romulan Klingon border, roughly between the stars of uh, Tramone or Tranome Sar and Datraga. So, about a sector and a half. So you could get there, but within a day at max warp, or day and a half if you just want to take it slow and under black alert. There. Slow and black alert, I think, would probably be our best. Slow and black alert, indeed. But uh, <clears throat> one more thing, because i got to dot my I's and cross my T's, because I'm a terrible player like that. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'd like to... Uh, I'd like to hail and open comms to uh, the Department of Temporal Investigations. The oh. same, see if I could get to contact the same individuals that we uh, went on our wibbly-wobbly timey-wimey adventure with. Okay. Walter and Scully. Okay. Um, you're doing this just from Nimbus? Well, I'm, I'd, yeah, I'd do it from Nimbus, but encrypted, no. No. of course, you know. I you're gonna break com gonna break com blackout just for that. Uh, okay. So do you actually do you actually call them or do they call you because they know that you're they're, they're expecting call the call. Them. How does that work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you reach. Uh, it takes a little bit for your signal to make it all the way to Earth. Uh, however, you do reach. Um, I believe it's Agent Agent Mulder. Uh, he's the one who answers. He looks a little bedraggled. Well, I'm assuming it's the afternoon on Earth, so good afternoon, Agent Mulder. I hope I'm not catching you at a bad time. Was that a time pun, Captain? <laughs> no, it's good. not. Good. I believe you are well aware of how the agency treats or the agency's attitude towards temporal puns, but what brings you, uh, what brings you calling, Captain? Well, I'll be brief. I'm current. the The contents of my the context of, the contents. Excuse me, what words? The contents of this communication is not to be listened to anybody, and I'll send over the requisite command codes to know that I'd like complete privacy. Okay, he looks a bit baffled at why you're calling him but he's he accepts it slowly yes well well i understand that the department of temporal investigations clearly has its own specific sector and things that you are and that you have to be concerned about i.e temporal anomalies i am uh, i am currently deployed on a mission where i feel to say that i can't there's not necessarily a lot of people that I have the ability to trust, nor do I have the ability to communicate. I do have, I have come to the attention, it has come to my attention and to the crew of the Nighthawk that Starfleet intelligence may indeed may be compromised. In that case, I have a very limited number of allies to turn to, so I'll be brief. In your 
in your line of work, has there any has there been any recent, possibly temporal indicators or I suppose a lesser word is paranormal after our excursion to Kate? Do, do is there anything that possibly the uh, the Tholians or the Zenkethi or has there been any other further uh, temporal seal temporal vaults that have been opened that has eliminated you to eliminate you information that would put the Federation in danger? Captain, the uh, uh, the Department of Temporal Investigations has marked the incident or the uh, temporal uh, the temporal paradox of the Cations to be closed. There's no other uh, there is no other evidence or pot potential fallout that appears to have been linked to this event. It, it has been closed and we are moving forward. I appreciate your concern though maintaining a temporal uh, maintaining temporal integrity is or sorry concern over maintaining temporal integrity is a rarity among starfleet captains well i mean considering i dropped off 200 out of time cations on your doorstep i only felt like it was potentially the gracious thing of me to go ahead and call in but time travel woes aside even if you're not necessarily directly starfleet there are certain things going out here. The Nighthawk is currently stationed at Nimbus 3. I am taking the Nighthawk to intercept the USS Silent Vigil, the USS Naganata, and the USS Black Shield. Depending on how the sequence of events partakes, I'd like there to be at least some other record of what we did here today and why we did that, in case the events don't necessarily pan out historically in the Federation's favor. In that case, I'm transmitting all this, all relevant information and data to you now. If you don't hear from the Nighthawk within the next month, then I'd like you to un I'd like you to unencrypt this information and do with and take it to the relevant authorities or do what you see fit. I understand, Captain. A pe a peculiar request, certainly an interesting assignment. I shall await your future hail with uh, gr with a great deal of uh, excitement. Oh, I'm sure. So uh, one would say time is on our side. <laughs> you hear a large exasperated sigh as he cuts the communication. <laughs> done. Now I'm done. Yeah. Take us out. <laughs> okay. So, uh, USS Nighthawk, traveling under black alert, uh, reaches the designated location of the USS Silent Vigil. How do you wish to approach this, Captain? Or Commander, or Security Officer, or whoever? Captain? That's my decision, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For so, now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, I'd like to, uh, as soon as we can actually ascertain the location in any of the of these Starfleet intelligence ships, I'd like to say something along the lines of, "Well, we all had, we all had interact and interaction with them in the Expanse." So at least my cover story for the for the time being is that well, even though you guys are likely under communication under a communication blackout, there's things going on at Cerberus Station and I need all available personnel to necessarily be retasked from their current assignments. Okay. So that's what we're gonna come that's what we're gonna come in under. But okay. besides that, as we do that and has if we can get them to travel with us then we'll start going ahead and investigating these starships. Well, that might be a bit of a problem. As you drop out of warp on extreme sensor range, uh, you do come across the USS Silent Vigil. 
the problem is, is that it appears to have been damaged, or at least in a bit of a firefight. Uh, you, you can see several ga uh, gaping holes around its superstructure, and uh, Lieutenant Vaid, your tact your consoles is showing a significant number of small sh of uh, debris surrounding it. Oh, that's not good. Life signs? That would be insight, insight science or insight medicine. Either or. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two, please. And ship? Uh, ship will be sensor science. And once again, so that's two successes for Vaid. <clears throat> Nothing for the ship, I'm afraid. Okay, so um, you are your sensors indicate several things. Uh, the first is that most of the debris appears to be Klingon in origin, uh, enough to be either one large Klingon ship or possibly three smaller ones. Uh, the USS Silent Vigil is operating under minimal power while attempting to effect repairs. There's approximately 500 life signs on board, which is about standard crew complement for a uh, Eclipse class intelligence cruiser. And so you get one free question as a science officer. This isn't the question, but you said one large or th potentially three small Klingon ships? Yeah, difficult to tell considering they're all parts and pieces. It's like, you know, picking up a Lego, a bunch of miscellaneous Lego bricks and being able to ID if it came from one set or several smaller ones. And uh, what is left there is another an eclipse sized ship with 500 life signs. Correct. Okay. Um, I should also I sorry. I should also mention that there are definite signs of disruptor fire and phaser fire, and roughly, given to particle decay, this has happened about three or four days ago. From a security standpoint, I'd be worried about if this could be staged. Yeah. But the other thing is, are there any mirror me yeah, signatures that's what over there? Yeah, mirror, mirror signatures. You're tasked with mirror stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, are there any mirror signatures? Uh, there is no sign of mirror life signs, mirror ships, or any of the like. Okay. I'm okay. assuming that's a free question? Yes. Right. So, so where are the other two ships? That's a good question. Why don't you hail them and find out? <laughs> that I don't want to do just yet. Consider me cautious. But there, <laughs> there we could spin, spin another momentum for another question, correct? Yes, you can. Yeah, you don't have any crazy talents or skills, do you? For asking any additional questions or anything? Me? Yeah. Uh. Didn't, didn't mean to step on cap. That's fine. It's fine. I don't... Uh... I need, I need to look it up, but I don't think intense scrutiny or uh, no. rapid analysis fit. Nope, I don't believe they do. I, two things I wanted to take care of, considering that there were signs of combat, I'd like Jeff and to man the fighter, just in case. If, since it seems like we're going to a potential combat situation. Okay. And secondly, um, if there are 500 life signs and you say this was three or four days ago, and the set, what's the status of their engines? Um, I'll give you this one for free. Uh, their engines are powered down. You see several, or uh, you see that their upper left pylon has taken a significant, da a significant amount of damage. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
No, we can spend one more minute to see if it's for another question to see if it's been sta looks like it's been staged. I'd rather know where the other chips went to. Yeah, or that. Trail. Uh, well, we let's use that uh, the momentum to see uh, how this damage came about and if there is uh, if this if there were Federation signatures at least on the oh. major damage. Okay. Or some other. I know there's Klingons that you said, but you know I want to make sure at least what happened to the engines was Klingon in origin or not. Right. Okay. Um, so the damage patterns are fairly sig are fairly um, indicative of strafing runs made by uh, uh, Klingon bird of prey attacks attack wings instead of large punching blows that are done by you know larger battle cruisers or or of the like indicating potentially a squadron of smaller ships instead of one large one um as per the damage it does appear to be mostly on uh the damage is or the damage done to the sh to the silent vigil is all done with disruptor fire So it's legit. So I mean, as, so as long as it looks like it's legit, but we still don't know if there, if the vigil itself was compromised or not, or if it, they're still on board. Yeah, we got no mirrors, life signs, so we still got to figure out what's going on there. All right. Uh, open hailing frequencies. But uh, make sure this this communication is only between the vigil and the Nighthawk, and jam any other jam any other outgoing communications. I don't want to make sure that the vigil doesn't send anything else to anyone else, or any other signals going out someplace else, just between us. All right. And I would like to uh, prepare an emergency response team and a team of engineers. Okay. And security personnel. And we gave up that electronic warfare suite. Yes, I believe you did. Okay, so. Uh, Rani says, sir, they're answering our hails. That's great. Admiral Thomas Riker. Um, he has a smear of grease along the side of his face. He looks at you... Looks, locks eyes with Captain Singral. Uh, Captain, you feel hatred coming from him. Captain Singral, what the hell are you doing here? Are you here to finish us off personally? I don't know what you necessarily mean, Admiral. I, I detect, I mean, the Nighthawk is detecting that your, your ship is damaged. Well, no shit. <laughs> Commander. Came... Go you, ahead. Uh, Commander. You are. Uh, I am here by ordering you and your chief of security to take Ad Captain Singral into custody for crimes against the Federation of Planets. Charges inc include conspiracy, act of attempts of sabotage, and whatever the hell else I'll drag out of him during his debriefing. Well, Admiral. I understand that this might be a delicate situation, but if you could allow me to explain. You you're ex free to... You can explain you're... when you are in cuffs on this, in the brig of the USS Silent Vigil. Now, and he locks eyes with uh, you, Helsing. You, arrest him. This is an order. You want him, sir? Listen to him, or come get him yourself? I don't have time for this. Whoa, well, hold on. Hold Sit on. Sit down and listen, sir. Hold on, Admiral. I'm going to comply. And I'd like to mute the channel briefly. All right. Cut communicating to me. I'm sure there's a button on my captain ship at this point to make it look like weird interference. Okay. All Oldest right. trick in the book. But yes, you're driving through a tunnel. Oh. We're driving through a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, uh, it's the vigil systems that has problems right now, not ours. Absolutely. 
And so quickly, I'd like to say to the rest of the bridge crew, comply with their request, beam me over. But as you, as I'm beamed over into the brig, bream over other Nighthawk personnel. I, I, the Admiral's upset right now, and I'll play along. But at this point in time, it's clear that our duplicates are involved, and the Admiral's not going to see reason. Seize the bridge, one way or the other. Maintain communications, Black Hat. Not how I expected things to go, but it's not exactly like it's not but exactly he, like I plan it. Sort of thing about this: if our duplicates are involved, why did he tell me to arrest you? Told you that means mirror mirror me, Helsing. He didn't see him. But it seems Director Singral is involved somehow. And one, one way or another, I'm going to find out what. We need to go over to the silent vigil to confirm what happened. Anyway, might as well play along. I was going to say, why don't you take him personally? Do you want us to go in the rest of the uh, non-Ox security personnel to go in heavy? No, I'd like them to I'd like them to be armed heavily, yes, while they escort me. While you also have a team that takes the bridge. So you want me to take the bridge or you want Loxley to take the bridge? Or actually... No, I want you to come with me. Loxley can take the bridge. Bashir can, can retain right. command of the Nighthawk. Humor him. <laughs> That's the point. Fun. Okay. Uh, so, we are going to back to the transporter room. Uh, let's see. Transporter room, where we will have the captain. Ooh, ah, everything's gone. Screwball. There we go. Ish, kind of. Nope, I've mucked up the complete overlay. There we go. That's better. Make that bigger. <clears throat> okay, so this time uh, we're going to have Captain Singral. Uh, we're going to have Mr. Helsing. And who else is going to come over on this little uh, parade of prisoners? I have... Yeah, let's go with me. Okay. Because the other ones will be needed for the bridge. Okay. Uh, what do we have here? We have security, so we have Yaz for you. Okay, so that's team one. And security here is going in with uh, phaser threes and phaser twos. All right, more threat for me. Thank you. Well, wait you see what the bridge the bridge taking crew is going in with. Okay, so that's team one. Who's team two? Loxley, Hanara, and um, Noel. Loxley, Hanara, and Noel. And Hanara. It's a good infiltration boarding party team. Okay, so we will deal with there. We'll deal with them shortly. So Probably, also, probably need an engineer in that, in that group as well. Might help. The Shran, perhaps? Or maybe Kassat? Sure, the Shran can come. Sure. Hostile boarding party on an allied Federation ship? What could possibly go wrong? Okay. What could be more exciting? And Absolutely. they're going with combat armor, phaser threes. Okay. That's even more threat for me. Yay. Okay. Uh, but fortunately, since we're already taking phaser threes... On the guard mission? Yeah. It's I only th the combat armor edition? I think so, yeah. Okay. As much as I wish it were otherwise, but it is what it is. Okay. I'm giving so, you a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have these guys, we have those. Okay, so first of all, we are going to deal with you. So, there is the... Uh, you, re uh, Chief Zell, you receive the brig, or the uh, transporter... Ah. Uh, Apologies. You receive the coordinates to the transporter uh, to the USS Silent Vigil's brig, which conveniently shares a very similar set to that of the Nighthawk, complete with similar people. Let's fix that. All right. Also, I hope it goes without saying that the binders that I'm in are hopefully something that I could easily get out of. I would not call you Captain Sing... I would not have expected anything less than Captain Singral. Or okay. from Captain Singral at this point. Okay. 
<clears throat> so you guys materialize down here and greeting you is three security officers similarly armed and then there is the uh, what you have here is Admiral Riker and a hunchback of a human uh, wearing thick go or thick, <laughs> uh, thick bubble goggles with a constant stream of information passing by him. It doesn't look like he's smiled at all in the last ten years. He's wearing the uniform of a commander. Admiral Riker greets the pair of you. Yeah, you can't help but notice that he has his phaser in his... Just sort of at his side. Cur um, uh, he has his phaser drawn just at his side. Just a type 2. <clears throat> Captain Singral. We... I have... As he gestures you to enter one of the brig... I would very much be very. I would very much be interested in knowing how the Klingons were able to find our ship, had our prefix codes, as well as how to defeat our camouf our active camouflage systems, and why it was encrypted using your code. I don't have the answer to some of those questions, Admiral, but I do have suspicions. And I'm willing to comply. And I, but I'd like to use my empath my empathic powers. I know you already told me I sense hate, yep. but what do I get from uh, uh, four eyes over there? Uh, roll me a um, insight plus command, I think. Okay, uh, that was a difficulty of one. Uh, so you get one momentum out of the deal. Um, because unlike Mr. Riker, this man doesn't seem to care about protecting his thoughts. Uh, you get a very impatient mind out of this individual. Uh, Commander Kaus is... Um, he's, he realizes that A, he must be here. B, he would rather be overseeing repairs. And C, he wishes that this would be over and done with so that they could get on with the damn mission. So, Admiral, it has come to my attention, and probably yours as well, and I don't mean that as a pun, I understand it's a delicate situation, that Starfleet intelligence has been compromised. The crew of the Nighthawk has first, and has had reason to suspect this for a while, and that's currently while, why we are here today. It is likely that my Mirror Universe co counterpart is responsible for the destruction to your vessel. In terms of other leaked SI assets, I have no knowledge of. I can ensure you that the Nighthawk is secure. And I can ensure you that I am our Sengral. Uh, you sense a bit of bewilderment, um, followed immediately by skepticism at the mention of the Mirror Universe counterparts. But he... But if he shows that, it certainly doesn't show on his face. Uh, his brother, William Riker's poker-playing skills are legendary among the Federation, or among Starfleet at least, so it's quite possible that he has a very similar poker face. <sighs> okay, Captain. Um, let's, for ex let's just say... Uh, uh, he walks away as he activates the Brig cell. Let's say that you're accurate, or that you're correct, and that there is a mole in Starfleet that isn't you. Why? What proof do you have that we... What proof do you have of there being a mole in Starfleet? Let's start there. With the increasing activity... And the, the the contents of the Nighthawks missions over the past few months, it has come to my attention, especially since the Nighthawks undercover trip to the Orion system. This SI has been compromised. 
we met an individual that worked for the Orion Syndicate that had personnel, limited personnel files on the, on the, on the members of my crew. That information combined with other classified things that have happened to the Nighthawk have led me to believe that more than one, more than one person within Starfleet po has possibly been compromised and or is not who they claim to be. The information is all available on my starship. I'd be willing to go over it with you. I'd be willing to set up a data transfer and I will be willing to use my command code to make to override it and to ensure ensure that you have all the information that you that you need. But I will only do so if I myself am certain that the silent vigil is not compromised. I know you might necessarily find that a roundabout trick, but I came here because I thought somebody on this ship was there. Now, Admiral, I understand that you are in a delicate situation right now. You don't want to mince words, and you think that I'm the enemy. Oh, I it, so if you want your information, I propose a transfer, a transfer of our ship's logs at the same time. You transfer all the information on your current ship's personnel, and I'll transfer my information on what I believe to be the corruption and stifling intelligence really is. Uh, the, um, this is going to be an opposed presence command test. Uh, with you as the aggressor and him as the defender. So can, let's... Help, can helping assist by looking imposing? Uh, not in this instance. Because Helsing is far more... Imp uh, Helsing is far more concerned about the fact that there are three other security officers with Type 3 phasers who look just as keen to shoot anybody that the Admiral or their commander tell them to. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's... I will buy, use a moment to get an extra die. Oh, which is good, because I'm going to use threat to buy an extra die for me, so... And I get, ooh, I get, um, ooh. ooh, my, well, that's uh, two successes and a complication for Thomas Riker, and Captain Singral got five, uh, so that is three more momentum for the cap, for um, the captain. Thomas, or Admiral Riker, he looks to uh, Kaus, who's goggles are currently spewing forth a bunch more data over over the front of his eyes uh ah, the commander just shakes his head slowly very well captain let's go to your ship Uh, he taps his comm badge. This is... Hmm. Admiral Riker calling Captain... Captain Lul. A sweet feminine voice answers. Lul here, sir. Captain, I'm... not entirely certain that everything is as we have been led to believe. I will be... I will be a guest of Captain Singral on board the USS Nighthawk. I will be bringing Commander Kaus and a data forensics team along with me. You have contr Well, the ship's always been yours, but ensure that the other assets don't... Or if you're able to establish communication with the other assets, uh, tell them to abort mission and return as soon as they're able. This is a top priority. They can breach... They can breach... Ah, they can breach black alert if necessary. He stands up. Uh, he stands upright. Walks back over to your uh, cell, Captain. Pushes the deactivation button. Looks to Commander Kaus and says, Well, this is probably the shortest incarceration of all time. And he makes a sweeping motion with his hand to, towards you, Captain. Well, 
I'll gracefully step out of the cell and uh, go ahead and tap my comm badge and say Sengrel to Nighthawk. Nighthawk here, sir. Five to beam up. Back to the ship. Um, sir, do you want to take him to, when we get there so I can have the team ready where we're going to take him to? The conference room? No, we're taking him to the conference room. Roger. Okay. And once again, back in the transporter bay, it's like you haven't left. So, that's the case. As we're leaving and we start walking to the conference room, I'd like to tap on the wall panels. If the away team hasn't already left, mm -hmm. I'd like to tell them to prepare to do so. And I'd also like to... Uh... Actually, no, that's it. Yeah, I'd like to tell them to prepare to leave and to make sure my standing orders are in effect that then the Nighthawk is blocking all of the further communication from the silent vigil. Okay, uh, so this is going to be a communicate. Um, so if uh, if the Shran could please roll me a control plus engineering, and the ship can assist with struct or with struct added with communications plus security, and I am you get to set the difficulty one, two, or three. How about do difficulty three and I'll spend momentum too? Sure, so. we'll do that. In the ship. Uh, ship is uh, communications plus security. That's what it was. Yep. One from Tashran. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, so, you believe that you're able to do so. All, all lights are pointing green on this front. In any case, when we're in the conference room, I'd like to request... Uh, Miss Jackson to join us. Okay. That's an interesting choice of personnel, but sure. Oh, and Mr. Coax. And Mr. Coax. Okay. Anyone else? That's it. Okie dokie. And I have my type 3 to Yaz and have Yaz with his waiting outside the door. Mm -hmm. uh, Admiral Riker looks at the amount of individuals he passes with type 3s and s Captain are you are you expecting a mutiny or are you the mutinous No I'm not but I'm in the same I'm in the same situation as you Mr. Admiral Riker I'm here to give you my information and to determine my suspicion Very well So as I bring up this data and I enter in my command code I'd like to make sure it's streamed in a limited manner, mm -hmm. just to add Burl Riker. And uh, once Coax and Miss Jackson get here, mm -hmm. that's when I'd like to give them their orders. Okay, uh, Mr. Coax. And, oh, yes. And while waiting on them to show up, I'll get a little pad I have, and I'll send it a, a quick note to um, whoever's manning the security station outside mm -hmm. to give me a rundown on Commander Koos, Koos? Kaus. Kaus. Uh, Commander Kaus is a leader in, foren in uh, forensics, uh, or data forensics, and uh, team management. Uh, uh, he, he actually grew up on Binar. And you're, based on his current physical profile, you're not entirely sure how he passed the necessary fitness tests to be a commander, uh, considering it looks like he might roll faster than run, but yeah. It could be two binars just by himself. Uh, it could be two binars and a, a trench, trench coat, coat, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, you owe me a coke. Oh, Man. God. Okay. So, uh, Coox and J Miss Jackson arrive. Uh, Miss Jackson strides in and looks around as this might be the first time she's ever set stepped set foot in the conference room Admiral Riker, we're both under heavy suspicion of each other and although i am willing and completely i'm completely willing to comply i need further assurances 
I've asked Miss Jackson here to attempt a mind melt. If we are both necessarily, has she will be the bridge between the two of us. I've also asked Mr. Kowax here. Not only is he beta, not only is he a beta zoid, but he can monitor our mental health as well. At this point in time, we'll both exchange the information that we have about ourselves after you've seen the limited data that we have. And in this, that's the truest sense to figure out exactly what's going on here. Interesting. We have very, we have very little time. I don't mean to. I don't mean to threaten you, sir. I would never do such a thing. But I encourage you to comply. Uh, he looks to Kaus, uh, his large eyes magnified by the goggles he's wearing. He frowns even deeper. I'm pretty sure your partner would not agree with this, sir. Admiral Rikers looks back. Well, wouldn't be the first time she's disagreed with the course of my actions, but that's why we work so well together. Uh, he reaches down, unclasps one of the uh, livers, and leans back in his it, leans back in the chair. Miss Jackson. But at the first sign of any, at the first sign of any problems, Mr. Kaus, you know what to do. Okay. <clears throat> uh, now, Miss Jackson actually has the mind meld talent. I can see that now. Okay. Uh, let's convenient. See. How convenient indeed. Okay, so this is going to... So if Miss Jackson could please roll me a... Con, let's see. A control plus... Hmm. Uh, gate jumper, for what roles have I had Soulcar do for mind meld stuff? Um, mostly control, and then it kind of depended on the situation and what we were yeah. doing. Okay. Um... Yeah, con we've mostly done, like, con stuff. Or... Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, so control plus con, I think, would work for a mind meld for Miss Jackson. This is going to be a difficulty of one, considering you are both non... Or you're both humanoids, and you are both willing. So, yeah, let's do that. Difficulty of one, control plus con. And if someone wants to roll for Miss Jackson. I'll go ahead and roll for her. Nobody right. objects. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, while they are currently knocked out and figuring things out, uh, Commander Bashir, you and Vaid and Thashran all find yourselves in the forensics, or in the lab. Oh, good. That's two successes. Uh, so that's one momentum for you, and we'll get back to that shortly. Uh, let's see. Where is the science lab? There it is. Okay. Uh, you guys find yourselves here with the forensics team that has been beamed over from the silent vigil. All in all, four individuals, completely and utterly humorless, the lot of them. And they are speaking... Well, they're speaking in very quick bursts to one another, one another rattling off uh, memory headings, uh, corruption indexes, uh, Command codes, encryption schemes, that sort of thing. Uh, is there anything that you wish to do with, to them, for them, with them, to each other? I don't judge. Scanning for Mirrorverse. <laughs> okay. Uh, insight science. Difficulty of one. <clears throat> That would be one more momentum for you. No, there is no mirror universe. Uh, no mirror universe stuff here at all. Uh, meanwhile, That's refreshing. very, very refreshing indeed. Okay, back to the conference room. Typically, there'd be a theater of the mind, but I never actually uploaded that set to here for whatever reason. 
uh, uh, Commander Helsing, uh, you and Commander Kaus, or for a few seconds you think you and Kaus are staring each other down, but you realize that Commander Kaus literally cannot see past the numbers in front of him. So there's no real point in staring him down if he's not even playing the game. <laughs> uh, Commander Koax is scanning both Admiral Riker and Captain Singral with his trans or with his medical tricorder, and indicates that they're both stable, and Miss Jackson appears to be in control of her mind meld, which is quite fascinating. You really should feel this as a as a Beta Z. It's like three minds all working together as one. It's Hmm. Uh, so, Sengral, uh, you are given, willingly, um, mental access to uh, the last couple weeks of Admiral Riker's uh, life. Minus the good parts with his hot Orion captain girlfriend partner thing. Um, basically, it, oh, it goes through the orders that were given to him directly from um, Director Chalmers. Uh, his orders were to fly, or his orders were to take the Silent Vigil through the uh, borders of Klingon and Romulan space, and use the Black Shield and Naginata to uh, per perform covert scans of the of the systems inside each border to assess their tactical capabilities. Everything was going pretty well for about a week and a half. You know, they jump a few light years, send out the ships, ships return, perform analysis on data, jump a few more light years, etc., etc., etc. They have made it this far. When uh, two days after the ships had vacated uh, for their respective missions, uh, they were ambushed by a, uh, or they were am ah, they were inter the silent vigil was intercepted by three Klingon core class birds of prey which is pretty much the 25th model of birds of prey bird of prey um without communication without any sort of um preamble all three ships open fired causing the uss silent vigil to t suffer severe engine damage and fight back given the size and weapons of the vigil they were destroyed Primarily because the Admiral Riker wanted no uh, pres no one reporting back of their covert mission. He was able to salvage computer cores and perform the analysis. Analysis indicated that these that the Klingons were given encrypted information and a decryption key, your decryption key. Uh, containing everything that was needed to know. Very similar to what was given, uh, what you picked up from the Orions. Te very detailed technical information. Uh, and that, is, and because of the mind meld, I will allow you uh, three free questions. Okay. Well, my first question is: Does he during the last? Uh, during these sequence of events, does he ever suspect anybody on his crew? Besides, you know, besides me, me being the point of evidence, did he ever ex suspect anybody in his crew exhibiting odd signs? Did he suspect them of, you know, obviously yeah. treason or leaking information to somewhere else? Or did he have, was there no security breaches that he was aware of or no suspicions? Uh, no, he was uh, quite imp uh, he, yeah. Uh, Commander Riker answers truthfully, and because you're Beta Z and literally inside his mind, you know he's telling the truth, is that there was no forewarnings of any security breaches. Indeed, the only smoking gun in this case was the uh, level of information given to the Klingons from you, allegedly. Allegedly. All right. My second question if is that not to implicate his partner but sh she was a potential list of suspects when is the last time that you knew that she called back to the orion sector uh, he is 
obviously, as he, you've gone through his memories, he's gone through yours. Uh, and he says that she has been ostracized from the Orions for the last 20 years and has had no reason to call home ever since her father died. And, All right. And is, he is more than willing to offer you full access to the vigil's communication logs to prove this. And my my last question, and I want to make sure I make it a good one. Is your favorite color? How many <laughs> lights do you see? <laughs> my last question. Oh, you think uh, you think Will would have done a better job? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> How would your brother have handled this? Brother have handled this. But, um, I don't know what my last question should be, honestly. Would he be willing to? Would he be willing for the Nighthawk personnel to have access, complete access to the bridge for the time being, since we're both inside each other's minds, as if we're both telling the truth? Since I was the one that had most of these suspicions, and I've already confirmed in in our heads that we're, that we're being genuine, would he please allow me and my team full access to the vigil to set to check for any sort of compromises? Um. So long as he is granted the same permissions on board your ship, yes. I will comply, but I would only ask him with a loaded team. The data, pers- the data forensic people on board should be more than enough. Agreed. All right then. That's my last question. All right. Uh, you both uh, inhale sharply as Lieutenant Jackson severs the connection, and she steps back. Uh, she nods. It is done. I appreciate you, Miss Jackson. Mr. Riker, since we've both been in each other's so head, we both know what we'd have to do. If you'd kindly if you'd kindly gra- grant me captain's level access to the silent vigil, we could go over the information and collate what we have together. Agreed. Commander Kels, you're staying on board the Nighthawk temporarily, as our lies in here. Please work with Commander Bashir. And uh, Miss Jackson wanders, uh, heads over to uh, Commander Coax. Doctor, I have seen information beyond my security clearance. I am requesting a my I am requesting a memory wipe of what I have seen. Coax smiles, puts his hand around her, and guides her out of the room. Meanwhile, on the bridge, because I kind of feel bad for this being a, so captain-heavy, let's have... So does the captain. <laughs> yep. Let's... All right. Commander Bashir, you are currently on the bridge. After making sure that the forensic people don't break too many things, when Commander Kaus comes through, he looks over the bridge with a bit of a disapproving gaze comes down to the chair. You are Commander Bashir. I am. I'm Commander, Commander Kels. Kels. He sticks an he sticks a cold, clammy hand out uh, to shake. I'll shake his hand. <laughs> and I'm just kind of staring at the goggles, looking at them. <laughs> yeah. If... My my one antenna's like perked up because the other one's still bandaged and broken. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a couple weeks. It might be up and running by now, but those things are delicate organs after all. Yes, it is. He sits down, without any preamble, he sits down in the captain's chair and begins to pull up the or pulls, pull up a data screen beside him and begins looking through that on top of the goggle, the information streaming mm. through his goggles. Tell me, what do you think of the captain? Ha! <laughs> I trusted him. He's a good man. 
deep Starfleet values. Good. Why? Problem? Yes, every mo every minute that I'm over, every hour that I'm over here, the USS Silent Vigil's efficiency drops by at least 2% in its current damage capacity. I'm mu I'm very concerned. I'm attempting to make I small talk while coordinating my data forensics team. I'm sure we can have extra engineering come over and help. I shall s signal that. I shall si I shall offer ah, I shall see what the captain says. The captain has approved this uh, transaction. I'll order Shistran to send a team. David, scan the area. Has there been anything? Uh, Ved, you would know that there has been nothing. Based on the last scan I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming by now you're just constant vigilance. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like scan, scan. Anything. <laughs> Anything <yet>. at all. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, hey XO, remember we have a um, um, one, one, one zero and one one working in a, the analysis that analysis lab. Commander Co Kaus Kaus might enjoy a uh a brief visit with him when he has a, a chance to take a break. Yes, I am aware of the Binar personnel on board. I am indeed excited to see them, but work comes first. And I'm sure they feel the same way. Yes, yes indeed. Okay, and we are now going to cut over to the bridge of the USS Silent Vigil. Where, ah, uh, let's see. Commander Kaus isn't there. Uh, Captain Lul the Orion captain that has been much alluded to sits in the center chair. Admiral Riker, upon beaming to the bridge side transporter boom, transporter pad, uh, strides off as as if he knows where he's going. Captain Singral, I assume you sort of follow him. Uh, you take note of the spacious layout compared to the fairly I wouldn't say tight quarters, more economical uh, layout of your bridge. Is this the stealth ship from Discovery? Uh, no, this is one of the bridges from um, Star Trek Online. I thought it fit. Oh, okay. No, that's really cool. I was going to say, it kind of reminded me of the Black Fleet ship that they had in Discovery, like yeah, the, those... the way it's set up. Yeah. That was a cool looking that's... operation center, but. Yeah, it was, but, uh, okay. I'm yeah, sorry. That's distracting. okay. <laughs> Admiral Riker's already uh, shouting orders to Captain Lule and a few other uh, yeomen and ensigns that follow in behind him. Are the other bridge personnel armed? They have Type 2 phasers, but they're all holstered. Okay. I'd like to, while I'm walking with Admiral Riker, I'd like to get a glance at the uh, sensor station to see if there's anything unusual on it. Okay. Um, you catch a, you catch a quick glimpse, glimpse, and you have a, uh, and you note the last or the assigned locations of the Black Shield and the Naginata. Uh, the Black Shield was operating in the Nequencia system, and the Naginata is operating in the Detrega system. Other than that, all sensors indicate the debris of the now former Klingon vessels and the USS Nighthawk. <clears throat> now, um, now because we are running just at episode length, uh, I'm going to cut a bit to the chase. Um, over the next couple hours, uh, you begin pawing... On working on both sides, um, all of you begin to come to a, a bit of a disturbing thought. Once you link all, all the disturbances that stretch all the way back to the first episode of the USS Nighthawk, 
where you encounter the former Breen councilman, uh, you realize that there is only one individual who has who has been able to send out all this information with such detailed um, with such detailed and with such uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, plant of uh, subtlety and subterfuge and both you and Admiral Riker look to each other at roughly the same time as you come to realize that director Chalmers has been playing you all for saps <laughs> my friend I defended him with the admirals and at that we are going to call the session and we are going to be back on uh, we will be back on Thursday July 9th for the finale of USS Nighthawk where Starfleet Intelligence attempts to take down the kingpin of Starfleet Intelligence so thanks again to my players for playing thanks for everyone for watching and we'll be back in a couple weeks bye bye